Hello and welcome back to the vlog. Today we're coming to you from the Millennium Suncor base mine. We are in a shovel pit right now. There are shovels all around me. We asked if we could get up close to a shovel. Behind me is a Bucyrus 495. EX 8000, a PH 4100. PH 4100, 4100. Thank you so much to Suncor for having us out. I know this is new for everybody. We're really happy to be here. So this is what this entire place is dedicated to, oil sand. I'm not being paid to say anything I'm saying. I'm just excited to be here, excited to show you all that right there. So what we're going to be doing today is we're gonna show you all what it takes to mine oil sand. So we're gonna to go to different areas around the mine. This is where it obviously begins in the face. This is all oil sand. There's three levels of oil sand here. Each one of these shovels is working at a different level, a different face, loading these trucks. All of these trucks are headed up to the crusher, to processing. So what they're after here is money, dirt, oil sand. So what this is essentially, it's sand with bitumen oil mixed into it. So all of what they're mining right now is like this. In the summer, this comes apart and gets all over you. And once it's on you, you're not getting it off. It's like you mix sand with a quart of oil. It's straight up oil sand exactly as they explain it. This is frozen, so it's a little bit chunkier. But this is all, again, it's mined here, it's put into the ultra class trucks, it's taken up for crushing, for processing, it's mixed with water to separate the water, or to separate the oil and sand. The oil is taken for processing and eventually refining into all sorts of critical oil products to run our world. hundred tons of material per bucket, 400 ton truck, four passes, and it's full. It's amazing. Like a triple seven, that's a big truck, typically in quarries, that's a hundred ton truck. hundred tons per pass. Going into all the big shovels, you'll see a cable. It's essentially a giant extension cord, it's a trailing cable. So they're bringing electricity in across these power poles here, all down these trailing cables into each shovel. Each shovel has its own trailing cable. You'll notice the D11 up top as well is ripping and preparing this material for that shovel so the shovel can dig through it as easy as possible. Behind me is one of their hydraulic front shovels at EX8000. That's just about as big as hydraulic shovels get. Above it, you can see the different shovels loading on the different levels of the mine. This is somewhat the bottom of the mine. And then above that is all of the overburden. One of their shovel operators in one of the P&H 4100s we saw noticed some rocks that were a little odd compared to what they're typically used to loading and it was actually one of the best preserved, if not the best preserved armored dinosaur ever discovered, they found while digging. Yeah. 
So when we dig down, there's a couple different things we're looking for. We're either looking for limestone, it's gonna start developing, yeah. or we're looking for what's known as water sand. And if there's water sand, we gotta stay a little bit above it, that way those things float. <laughs> Cause you get down too low in it, it's like a soupy sand mixture. It's not quite a quick sand, like they'll float on a little bit, but after sitting there and the motion of the shovel digging, oh, and it'll she'll slowly settle start in there. setting us all down. if we could get up close to a shovel. This one behind me is a Bucyrus 495. It is being worked on right now, so it's not active. Power is still going to the machine, but there's no one working on it. There's no one around it, so we can walk up near it. If you wanna see the stats of this shovel, you can check them out right here. Doo -doo 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 -doo. So let's go check it out. Does it make me look small? Okay, so roughly a big SUV, about three tons. This holds 100 tons per pass. Every single time around, 100 tons, 100 tons. Four passes, one truck. This is also, it's a Bucyrus, but Caterpillar bought Bucyrus many years ago, so this was produced before Caterpillar bought them, but now this is technically a cat shovel, whereas the other ones were P&H, which is technically Komatsu. Old tooth, new tooth. You're looking at that. That's good. Yeah, that's good stuff right there, huh? And what you're looking for, you're looking for the size of the sand. See how small the granules of sand are? Yeah. So it's easier for the plant to push through in the tailings lines. Yeah, there's six people in this cab very comfortably. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> That's your house camera. That camera actually goes not only to the house right there, but you can actually see your uh, ropes on your drum. There's our bus and everything. Yeah. There's the back side of the shovel. Oh, so that's my blind side. That's my back side. Yeah. Now up here, you could have a very large wedding. Very large. Yeah. Like very large. 40 people. Most of our bits, but, like uh, a wed uh, with a band up there. See that little satellite. scraggly wired ball there? That is attached to the trailing cable and you pick up that with the teeth and move it wherever it needs to go very gently. Does it have a bathroom? Yes. It does. Enough of the shovel. Let's go somewhere else. It's lunchtime, or it's coffee break, it's 11, so they stop three times per day. We're in, we're in the pit right now, so they're not gonna waste time to go drive up to outside of the pit. They're gonna stay in the pit, and they're all gonna collect here. So all of these trucks, they're gonna be pulling up right here. These are mostly Komatsu 980s. There's some 797s here. They'll park the truck, they'll get off, they'll go in here, they'll have their lunch, they'll warm up, they'll go to the bathroom, and then when it's time, they'll get back in their trucks, they'll tear off, and they'll go back to work. So you'll notice the trucks come loaded a lot of times. When it's time to stop, they just report here, loaded, unloaded. When it's time to shift change, they stop whether they're loaded or unloaded. It doesn't make sense to go unload that truck because the round trip to the crusher is a ways away. So they just stop 400 tons of material, or nothing. So this is 
is where the trucks come in for their brakes. Behind me, bathrooms, break room, and then here they have diversity facility. This is new. This is actually very cool. There is a prayer room in here and also a nursing room. Now there's roughly 35% women truck drivers of the 100 plus trucks roaming the pit at any one time. It's a lot of women, and if they've had a child recently, they could come in here for this nursing room where they have the privacy needed. It's nice and clean. It's not a bathroom, it's not in their truck, which is, I think, really cool. Let's go check out a truck. She's an old girl, she's been around a while. Yeah. That means the park brake is on. Uh-huh. If the park brake is on, not on, we do not approach. Yeah. Okay. So for hauling around here, they use three primary trucks. There's the 797, the 980, and this is the smaller one. This is the 930 Komatsu. This is about a 300 ton truck. It'll haul either sand or overburden. So this is, like I said, the small truck. And for stats, we will put them on the screen here. This screen right here, it says 6424, now loading on side double. So that's the shovel he's reporting to. And that means it's loading on both sides. 55% fuel remaining and coffee break 19 minutes till the end of the coffee break. So the operator is over where we just were getting his coffee. I'm in the seat. This is an older 930, so this has been around for a while, but still pretty nice cab. And this is the big truck on site, the Komatsu 980. This is an ultra class 400 ton haul truck significantly bigger than the last one we were just on. If you're interested in seeing the stats, we'll put them on the screen. And now for a new segment, Tire Talk. Hey Chase, look, a tire. This is a enormous Bridgestone. It's on a 980 Komatsu. Paul truck, they run both Bridgestone and Michelin here. This is, as you can tell, one of the largest tires in the world. And of course, they do wear like a car tire. He was even explaining, even in conditions like this, these will warm up to a significant uh, temperature because you have so much weight resting on this tire. There's six tires, they are between, depending on the truck, fifty to a hundred thousand dollars each. That's a lot of rubber. And now for the final truck of our big truck segment, and that is the Caterpillar 797B. Another 400 ton ultra class haul truck this is an absolute legend in the haul truck world. And for the stats, we'll put them up on the screen so you can check out what this machine's capable of. All right, let's get up on this thing. So that is the power plant of the truck. You'll notice two key differences for this truck compared to the Komatsu or the 797F we've seen at Finning. There's no after treatment, this is not tier four. So the exhaust goes directly from the power plant into the bed, out the back. And also, there's nothing up here for, for an electrical drive system because this is a mechanical drive truck. So the Komatsus are electric drive, this is a mechanical drive unit. 
Yeah, you could easily play Foursquare or Hopscotch. You could play Hopscotch. You could play Hopscotch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cold out right now. It's below freezing. You'd think the tires would be cold because they're running along snow and ice all day, but as a matter of fact, they're warm because when you're hauling 400 tons of material, bouncing up and down, rolling down the haul roads at up to 70 kilometers per hour, it generates a lot of heat. And you can see the water on the tires because of the heat and that snow melting. So we've seen the loading, we've seen the hauling, and now here is the end of the road for the trucks, and that is processing, crushing. So the trucks are coming in here, 400 tons of material, oil sand each. They're backing in here, they're dumping into that hopper. The hopper feeds that material at a specific rate into the crusher. The crusher is mostly for sizing, to make sure that the water can properly penetrate that oil sand, the more water around that oil sand, the better it'll separate. It'll go through the crusher up into the stacker to that surge pile. From that surge pile, it's pulled into what they call plant 86. Plant 86 is where the oil sand is mixed with that hot water. It's spun around a bunch and that separates the oil from the sand. The sand then goes to the tailings pond where it's discarded and it'll eventually be all reclaimed. The oil, they put it through a air separator to remove the air. They call it froth. They'll remove the air from it. It'll go into holding tanks and from there, it's piped to the actual processing facility where it's turned into that crude oil product that's then sent for further refining elsewhere and turned into all kinds of products imaginable. What kinds of products? That didn't look like very much, but that was 400 tons of material getting dropped right into the crusher. So what is this pile here? This pile is rock road base. These trucks are only as good as the roads that they can drive on. So it is essential to have as good, strong, smooth roads as they possibly can have. Why are we out here in the winter? Well, because the winter months are when these mines are full bore. The ground is frozen, the roads are nice and hard, these trucks can haul as much material fully loaded as fast as they can, that 70 kilometer limit. Thanks to road base, the road maintenance crews, the blades, the dozers, everything that it takes to get these trucks from shovel to crusher. rocks and that's where we're going the crusher Okay, we asked for a different view of the crusher and we got one. This is the 86 plant. This is one of the crushers here. That's another one over there. They put in total 14,000 tons per hour through this setup here. These trucks backing in are all 400 ton trucks, similar to what we've been seeing all day. There's just one difference. And that is that they're all without drivers because they're completely Autonomous. So these trucks are backing up autonomously. They're dumping into this hopper. That's 400 tons of material in an instant into that feeder. The feeder then regulates how much material is going into the crusher. It's being crushed, sized, and then sent off 
for further processing via conveyor belt. that we're all done here at the Suncor base mine millennia mine we got to see from start to finish what it takes to mine oil sand bring it to the crusher and turn it into oil this has been an amazing experience thank you so much to Suncor for having us out I know this is new for everybody we're really happy to be here the hospitality has been amazing so thank you hopefully you enjoyed hopefully you learned something along the way we'll see you in the next one stay dirty everybody